intermediate accounting 6F bonds calculating a gain or loss when we extinguish debt. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, our email, our website. The book Cost Accounting for Dummies is being taught uh, on a weekly basis online in a free online course. And here's our Twitter account. Um, when we talk about extinguishing debt, What we're talking about is uh, taking debt off the books so it no longer exists. So here's my question on that. So we have uh, $100,000 in bonds, which would be 100 bonds at $1,000 a piece. The interest rate is 10%. So that the annual interest in all the bonds would be 10% of $100,000 or $10,000. The bonds pay interest semi-annually, which is typical for a corporate bond. In this case, it pays interest. They pay interest January 1st, July 1st of each year. So six, every six months, we pay $5,000 or 10,000 divided by two. The face amount is each, of each bond is $1,000. So 1,000 times 100 bonds is $100,000. When we issue the bonds, we receive more than the face amount of the bond. In fact, I'm going to correct this. We sell, we issue the bonds at a price of 103, which is another way of saying 103% of the $1,000 face amount. So the bonds we receive, the bond proceeds we receive at issue is $1,000 in blue times 103 or 103% in green. So we get $103,000. What that means is, is that we have a bond premium. We take the amount we get when we issue the bond, $103,000 in blue, and we subtract the face amount of the bond, the amount we have to pay back at maturity of $100,000, we get a premium of $3,000. And I say next to this that we're going to amortize that on a straight line basis, and I'm going to explain what that means in just a minute. Let's talk about some dates. We issue the bond on 11X1, and the bond is callable 1231X2, which is two years after the date of issue. Now let's talk about what a call feature is. It says the bond is callable on 1231X2 at a premium of 101 or $1,010 for every $1,000 bond. That would be 101% as opposed to the 103%. A call feature means that the issuer has the right to pay the bond off early before maturity. That's the good news. The bad news is that typically the issuer has to pay the bondholder something more than $1,000 per bond. In this example, it's $1,010. Because it's a way of rewarding the bondholder for the fact that you're paying off the bond early. And so the question is, why would an issuer want to pay off the bond early? And the answer is... If new bonds could be issued at a lower rate, you'd be willing to call in the bonds and pay them off early, even if you had to pay a little more than $1,000 per bond. You can think of it as the same as refinancing a home loan. If you could replace your 5% home loan 30-year for a 3% home loan 30-year, you'd do it, even if it costs you a little bit uh, to do the refinancing. It would probably be be you would probably be better off in the long run. So that's what a call feature is, and it is at the issuer's choice. So what this means is, under dates, is that any time from 1231X2 going forward until the bond matures three years later, the issuer has the right to call in the bond and pay it off early at $101 or $1,010 per $1,000 bond. That's what it means. The other thing I wanted to mention here is that because we issued that bond at a premium of $3,000 for all the bonds, we are going to amortize that amount on a straight line basis. It's actually going to go into income. It's going to be additional income to us, recognized evenly until maturity. And since the bond is a five-year maturity, has a five-year maturity, if I take 
the total premium in blue and I divide it by five years, I get an annual premium amortization of $600. And again, that's going to go into income. So after all that being said, I finally get to the question. Assume that the bonds are called by the issuer on July 1st of X3. That's two and a half years after the issue date. And since it's a five-year bond, five years, two and a half years is halfway through. Two and a half years after the issue date, which is about half, which is halfway until maturity. The question is, what is the issuer's gain or loss when you extinguish the debt, which means that you pay it off and the debt no longer exists? And there's a couple of steps here. The first is to compute the carrying amount of the bond at 7-1 of X3. Well, the original premium was $3,000. If I've amortized two and a half of the five years, that means I've amortized a half of the total amortization, or $1,500. So my carrying amount is the issue price of 103, $103,000, less the amount of the premium that I've amortized, 1500 and what I'm left with is the new carrying amount after the amortization, which would be 101500 That would be 101500 would be the carrying amount, or the amount that I have on the books at 71X3 when I call in the bonds to pay them off. The next step is to take that carrying amount, what's on my books, that I'm going to remove from my books, 101500 and compare that to the call price. Remember that I'm calling them in at 101 if I go up to the call feature. And by the way, this call feature is going to be stated on the face of the certificate. So in order to motivate bondholders to buy a bond that has a call feature, which means it may be paid off early, we often have to offer a call feature that's at a premium to get them to buy the bond. So there's the 101 or $1,010 per bond. 101,000 total. And the difference is the carrying amount that I take off the books in blue is 101,500 and I only have to pay $101,000 to remove it from my books. So my gain when I extinguish the bond is $500 and once again that's the call price of 101,000 less the carrying amount that I have on my books and that should be 71x3. And that's how I get my gain. And the way to see it's a gain is to look at the journal entry that gets set up to pay off the bond and extinguish it. So I remove a payable from my books of $100,000. That's the face amount of the bond. I pay cash for the call bond in the amount of $101,000. That's the call price I paid. This is new. I'm removing from my books the unamortized premium on the bond. The premium that was going to be amortized over the life of the bond is now not no longer exists since the bond doesn't exist. The unamortized premium doesn't exist, which is why I'm debiting it. There's the cash I get for the call bond, and in order to get debits to equal credits, this should say this is a gain on bond extinguishment, and the reason we know it's a gain is that it's a credit. A loss would be a debit like an expense, a gain is going to be a credit like income. So what we did was, we calculated the carrying amount by subtracting off the amount of the premium that we amortized to get a new carrying amount. We then compared the carrying amount here to the call price and found out that we gained 500 bucks because we pay off a bond at 101 that's on the books at 101,500. Then we have our journal entry to remove the payable, which is a face amount, credit cash for what we to pay the bondholders, remove the unamortized premium, and to get the entry to balance we need a $500 credit, which is a gain on bond extinguishment. 
That's the end of our Intermediate Accounting 6F. You'll find video textbooks on the website. You'll find a complete list of videos on YouTube that are now linked to the website, stltest.net. You'll also find one-on-one -on -one live tutoring sessions that you can get through the website. The book Cost Accounting is an ongoing free online course. We teach it for an hour every Saturday. You can find that on the website. Here's our Twitter account. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.